In this presentation, we will enter a credit card reconciliation. Get ready, because it's time to rise above the crowd with Sage Business Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars summary page within Sage. We're going to be opening up our reports first, so let's go down to the reporting. Let's open up the balance sheet report. Once open, we're going to be right-clicking on that report up top so that we can then duplicate it. So right-click and then duplicate. Then I'm going to go back to the tab to the left. We don't really need the profit and loss, I don't think, and not at this point. So we're going to go back to, to the first tab and then go straight on over to the banking information. Within the banking information, we want to go down to that credit card. Credit card down below, we've already entered all the information from the bank feeds. So I'm just going to click on the credit card and then we'll take a look at the reconciliation process for it. So we have over here in this button, we got a drop down. So we want the drop down, not the button. And we're going to go to the uh, drop down, which says reconcile. Same kind of process to reconcile here. We're going to have our bank statement. So our bank statements, up, and this is our credit card statement. It's a little bit more confusing than a, than a standard bank statement in that the most prominent date on a credit card statement will typically be the date that uh, you have to pay in the credit card statement. And what we're really looking for is the end of the period. So make sure you find the end of the period date as you go through the reconciliation process for the credit card. We'll typically have a similar kind of summary as with the bank statement, beginning balance, and then we'll have the, the uh, payments, any payments that we made, and then charges or increases to, to what we owe, and that'll give us the ending balance. And then, of course, we'll have the detail down below. Obviously, in this case, however, the charges, the stuff we owe, will be greater than, you know, the, the, the payments that we'll have. So it's kind of a it's kind of like a bank statement that's always overdrawn, right? We're going to have more charges than we do the payments that will be off, or at least the same amount, hopefully the same amount. I recommend doing the same amount and pay it off uh, each time, not be paying that interest on it. But in any case, it'll either be the same or uh, we'll have more charges than payments on it. If you have more payments than charges, you probably did something a little funny. Something went wrong, but that's okay. That's probably, that's probably a good thing. So in any case, uh, note that if we take a look at this ending balance right there, that's not going to tie out at this point to what we have on on the balance sheet so if i go back over to the balance sheet just to check this out as of 4 30 2020 and go down to our credit card we're only at the 250 so we have the 250 in it why because we're missing that beginning balance because it's the first time we've done the reconciliation we didn't get the beginning balance in the bank feeds all we got was like the detail the stuff that happened but not the stuff that happened before that time period that we entered the bank feeds for the first time that we've done the credit card banking information so we're gonna have to enter that 1000 into the system so we will have to deal with that but first let's go back over to our credit card information so i'm in sage i'm in the first tab for our credit card we're going to be reconciling as of the end of the period now again remember you're not picking up the uh the date of when your payment is due but the date of the of the period end which for us is going to be april 30th so april 30th the ending balance then is going to be, we have 1,250. So 1250, 1250, 1250 is going to be the balance we are looking for. And I think that's it. So let's go ahead and apply that out. Let's go ahead and apply that out. And then we'll go through our, our same process of check, ticking and tying this off. Now, it, it should be pretty straightforward. We should be able to basically just check everything off. Why? Because it all, it all came straight from the bank, right? It came straight from the credit card feeds. So we'll check these all off. But I will go through the standard process, and that's going, you know, to this side, to the other side. So there's the 250 payment we made. There's the 250 payment we made. Back over, there's the 250 payment that I'm making green because we made it. And then we'll go over, there's the 160 charge. Let's do two at a time, 160 and 120. And then we're going to go back over here and say there's the 160 and the 120. And check those off, and then I'm going to make them green because we found them. And then we have the 95 and the 75. So we've got the 95, 75. And then there's those two. And then the 50. I already saw the 50 over there. I totally saw it already. So I'm going to make it green. Kind of cheating going in advance. So there's the 50. And there we have it. Now you would think that we would be done at this point in time. But we're not, right? If I go back down, we're out of balance by what? The beginning balance, the 1,000. So this is the only time that we kind of, I'm just going to add it to check it off. You would think the beginning balance would be over here. It typically would, but we didn't enter any, any statement prior to this. So if I just add it to the activity and then check it off, then I'll be back in balance over here. So that's what I'll do for the first time. Then we'll be good going forward after that. So how do I do that? I'm going to go, I'm going to go back up top and enter this. I'm going to make a new tab. I'm going to right click on this tab, duplicate the tab. 
So then I'm going to go back into the banking section over here and we'll go into the credit card information. There's a couple ways we can get into the same kind of section, but I'm going to go into the banking, then go back down into our uh, credit card. That'll open up the, the proper bank account or credit card account for us when uh, we enter this transaction. So then I'm going to go to the new drop down and I'm going to go to the expense and payment. So we're going to make an expense and payment transaction. I'm going to go to the other tab up top. So it's not a vendor payment. We're going to go into the other payment. And then I'm not going to put a vendor up top. It's going to be from the bank account to the credit card, the method credit card date. Let's make this on uh, 4 1. So I'm going to say not 2019. It's going to be 4 1 there, April 1st. And then the amount is going to be for 1000. Now, where's the other account going to go to? Well, it's the same thing with the bank statements. It's, it's either something that happened in a period prior to this, which was charges, which is most likely it. Uh, or, or it's, you know, it's a beginning balance that we're going to have to put into the equity section. So I'm going to put it into equity. It's got to be going into some kind of equity account. So if I select the drop down, I'm looking for the accounts that have like a, a 3000. That's going to be the account numbers they typically use for equity. We have then available down here, the contributions and the draws. It looks like in the 3000s in the equity sections. So it would probably be more likely that it should be into like a capital account or the retained earnings type of account. Uh, rather than the contributions and draws i'm not going to set that up right now i'm just going to say you know the point is that we need to be putting it into an equity account not be putting it into the income statement because the income statement is going to be the account that uh, we're going to be needing to tracking for the current time period so it needs to be in an equity section i'm going to use the contributions here again you might want to put it into like set an account up for a capital account or a, a retained earnings type of account because it probably is the result of transactions from the past that rolled over into the equity section but i'm going to put it here for now instead of setting up an account and we're going to go ahead and save that so if i save that then i can go back to the balance sheet and check out what happens within it so if we go back up into the old balance sheet here and i uh, recalculate the balance sheet and scroll back down we should have in the credit card there's that 1250 that's going to tie out to our ending balance here there's the 1250 in the credit card balance there we have the 250 clearing account that's a payment we made on the credit card that will clear out once we enter that payment on the banking side of things too once it clears the bank then the other side will go here and clear that out uh, we won't be doing that on the bank side of things but just note that's how that's how i'm going to set this up to uh work now, so this ties out, then we're going to go back on over to the first tab, our reconciliation, and then I'll refresh the screen. I would do that by hitting the little apply button again. If you hit the apply button again, it'll refresh the screen. And then we got that 1000 that has now been added to our transaction. So I'm going to check that one off. There we have it. And then if I scroll on back down to the bottom, then we're back, we're in balance, we're reconciled now. So there's no beginning balance. So again, we had to kind of, we kind of had to do something a little bit different, a little tweak off on the, on the first bank reconciliation because we checked off that 1000 instead of it having been here in the beginning balance. And the following uh, reconciliation for the credit card, that will not be the case. The beginning balance will be correct and you can roll forward from there. Also just note that of course, this is the ending balance as of this statement and you'd probably then be making a payment on it. So after you make the payment on it, you know, your balance is going to be, you know, as of the date you made the payment, that 1250 minus the, the payment amount you made. And also just note that there, this is as of uh, April 30th. So obviously more transactions, if you have the bank feeds, could be happening in periods following or after the, uh, this point in time. So that's going to be the reconciliation. Then once reconciled, we go ahead and finish this up. And that'll give us our uh, reconciliation. We could then print this out if we so choose. So that's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.